there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and by request I'm going to show you how to cut a mat for a picture, a painting, or a photograph. Anytime that you're framing artwork that's done on paper or photograph, any work on paper, you want to have a mat. That separates the um, paper from the glass. That way if there's any humidity or condensation on the glass, the painting won't stick to the glass and become damaged. Same thing with a photograph. If you ever found an old painting that had um, the picture stuck to the glass, it's because of condensation. So that's why we use a picture frame mat. It also adds to the beauty of the piece. So um, the first thing you want to do is, um, this is the front side of the mat, is a uh, kind of a avocado green. You want to flip your um, your paper over your and your mat over, and you want to figure out about how much of a border you want. I decided that I wanted about a three inch border all the way around on this painting. So I've already marked that off and drew my rectangle in the middle. And here are the supplies you're going to need. Um, this is a push style Logan Cutter Model 2000. I've had this for about 15 years and that's how you get a nice beveled edge cut. You'll need a metal straight edge. This came from um, the hardware store. It's Master Mechanic brand, but any brand will work. And you also need a knife that you can make a straight cut with. This is a, also a pull style cutter that is by Logan. It's a straight cutter, model 701. Um, I like this because I can go through, I can adjust the depth for either foam core or for um, mat board. And it also takes the same blade that my uh, bevel cutter does. And to change a blade, you simply unscrew this nut you slide out your blade, then you slide a new one in. I generally change my, and then after you've got that corner used, you can flip it over and use the other corner. So you get um, you get two surfaces from each razor blade. Um, and I usually order my blades in packs of 100, and um, but the, and they last for years. And um, But I like it that both these cutters take the exact same blade, so I don't have to carry different blades for different cutters. It's also easier to cut with this than an X-Acto knife. But go ahead and use an X-Acto knife. That'll work just fine as well. All right, so to use your push style cutter, uh, you wanna make sure you have a piece of cardboard or foam core on your surface because that reduces the drag. You don't wanna work on a self-healing mat because it will be, um, it'll drag too much when you try to push your cutter and dull your blade. And you don't wanna work on glass because it's slippery. So uh, you just want a piece of card, uh, foam core or cardboard underneath. You wanna line your straight edge up to the, um, the line that you drew. And notice that my cutter is, on, is towards the inside of the mat. So you want to line, there's a little um, little ticky mark there. Let me just put that up close to the camera so you can see. See that little silver line right there in the middle? Can, maybe the light can catch it and you go oh, out of frame here. There, you can see that now. You want to line that up with the mark on your um, mat. That is your stop and stop, start and stop line. You want to push the little thumb thing, push that in, and you want to slide it up until you that little line on the back of your mat cutter reaches the um, line on the other side of your rectangle. And you just take it out, you want to move the mat board, line up your ruler again, and do the same thing over and over again. I think my cutter might need to be oiled because it's not, um, the blade isn't popping back like it usually does. I don't think I've ever oiled it, I've had it for like 15 years, it gets a lot of use. So it's probably a good time for a cleaning and an oiling. I would just clean it um, and oil it with a little WD-40 and cut it out on some scraps to make sure there was no oil leaking before I used it on a good project. I get my mat board um, online, uh, like uh, places like um, Art Supply Warehouse and Dick Blick, Cheap Joe's, they all have good prices. Um, so you can order whatever colors you think you'll use a lot. Um, and the nice thing about that is that, say if you get a, a mat board, standard comes 40 inches by 32 inches, you can cut that in quarters and have four 16 by 20 mats. But then the windows that you um, that you get from your from cutting your mats can be made into smaller mats. So you can keep using all of those scraps when you buy the mat boards themselves. So then you can just set your mat on your picture and see how it looks. So you got that really nice beveled edge. I kind of hold it to the light. Hopefully you can see that nice white bevel. It would show up a little bit better on a darker painting. Um, and then to secure it to the back, I would simply just use some acid free acid-free fabric tape um, and that, that is removable. So that way if, um, say you've made a painting and you've sold it and the person wants to change it out, they can easily remove the adhesive and uh, frame it the way that they want to. But this is a great way to be able to inexpensively um, 
mat your artwork or photographs that can fit in regular frames. I start. I also, a tip is to cut your mat board before you cut your window out. Cut it to a standard size like 8 by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20. That way you'll be able to buy a frame at a much lower cost than getting a custom frame. So there is how you cut a mat. I want to thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.